Humans have always looked up at the sky. They used astronomy to track time, orient their cities, decide when to plant their crops, and even based their religious practices on their celestial world. But there was so much more to learn. In the 16th century, Copernicus advanced the concept that the sun was the center of the solar system. Blasphemy, because everyone knows that the Earth is the center, and huge models were built to demonstrate it. On to the 17th century, where we find Galileo, the first modern scientist, using a telescope to look at celestial bodies. He discovered the four brightest moons of Jupiter, a solar system in miniature. He also discovered sunspots and craters and mountains on the moon. Later that century, Kepler developed the three laws of planetary motion and said, The square of the orbital period is proportional to the cube of the planet's distance from the sun. Imagination and scientific accomplishments spurred on the discoveries of more moons and planets, the Milky Way, and other galaxies. But history took a dramatic turn on October 4, 1957, when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite about the size of a basketball. It caught the world's attention and the American public off guard when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 2. The score was the Soviet Union 2, the United States 0. But three months later, the United States joined the race when it launched Explorer 1, which discovered the radiation belts around the Earth. Surprisingly, Sputnik's greatest achievement was that it would lead to the creation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration with the signing of the Space Act in July 1958. A new era of political, military, technological, and scientific endeavors had begun. Discoveries now leaped forward with tremendous energy during 50 years in space. Many may argue that the 20th century was the information age, but one could also argue that it was the aerospace age, brought about through aviation, rocket, and space pioneering. The era of human exploration began with Yuri Gagarin's flight in 1961. In the United States, Project Mercury was initiated in 1958, and three weeks after Gagarin's flight, Alan B. Shepard, Jr. became the first American to fly into space. Project Gemini was the second human spaceflight program. It made 12 flights, including two unmanned flights to test new space equipment. President Kennedy, however, was not content with just these achievements. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The Apollo program began with a tragedy when a flash fire in the command module during a launch pad test killed three astronauts. The subsequent redesign produced a safer and superior series of spacecraft for the 45 astronauts that flew in them. Twelve men would eventually walk on the moon. Also memorable was the Apollo-Soyuz test project when the two superpowers on Earth joined in space with a handshake representing the partnership between the Russian Soyuz and the Apollo astronauts. Skylab was then developed for long-duration space travel and to expand our knowledge of solar astronomy beyond Earth-based observations. The Space Shuttle has dominated American human spaceflight since it was launched on April 12, 1981. The technology developed for its many missions, the gyrations of its manipulator arm, and its service capabilities for payloads such as the Hubble Space Telescope and the Space Station have been phenomenal. Today, the International Space Station is the most complex engineering and construction project in the world. 16 countries and over 100,000 people are involved in this monumental achievement. Yes, space travel may have started with a race, but look what was discovered and developed in those 50 years. Balloons and rockets carried small scientific payloads, space communications and navigation satellites evolved to highly successful global positioning systems. 
satellites provided data for weather forecasting, beginning with Tyros in 1962. Going beyond weather, satellites were developed to study Earth's atmosphere, its hydrology cycle, meteorology, climate, oceans, and cryosphere. And let's not forget about that great ball of fire in the sky, including not only its complex interior and surface sunspots, but also its flares and coronal mass ejections. Many questions about the complex relationship between the Sun and the Earth remain to be answered. Solar system exploration and mapping began with missions to our Moon, then Venus, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Saturn, Titan, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and comets. Several landings have taken place on Venus and Mars, and even on an asteroid. Scientists now have a greater understanding of space astronomy, but we are still learning about comets, black holes, gamma ray bursts, neutron stars, supernovas, gravity waves, galaxies and galaxy strings, dark energy, the structure and evolution of the universe. All this in 50 years? I wonder what the next 50 years holds for us.